So in this session, I'd like to take you through basic animation in processing, basic principles for doing animation in processing. As usual, you can ask questions at Slido. Um, C046 is the code you'll need. So processing's draw method does all the commands within its curly brackets for each frame of an animation. So you might want to put a bunch of drawing commands into the draw method and they'll be drawn um, hopefully 60 frames per second. Um, if there's a lot of work to do, they might only be drawn 15 or 10 or even if things are really disastrous, only 5 or 3 frames per second. You can set how many times per second by that, that you're going to request processing render your um, animation at with frame rate. Um, but basically, it'll try and go as fast as possible um, if uh, everything, all things being equal, up to 60 frames per second. So a simple example is the rotating square example. So you may already have seen this one, but let's have a quick look at how it works. We have some variables that we're using. We have setup code that sets each of those values carefully and sets a fill. Also gets rid of the stroke on that, um, that square. And then each frame of the animation, the draw method is called. And notice we have a bunch of commands here. We're adding to this variable here and this variable here these three variables in fact. So every time this draw method runs these variables get added to. Um, X and Y are variables that are used in the translate command so each time we add to those we're moving the distance that the translate command translates by. Essentially we're moving the point at which the square is drawn and each time we um, add to theta, we're changing the rotation value that is used. Now, remember push matrix um, saves the current context and pop matrix goes back to the current context after the translate command. So basically we're moving the position at which uh, these three commands, sorry, this command here is run. So let's have a look at it. So we start and then shortly after it disappears off screen. We're waiting for the text to be loaded here. You can see in the top left hand corner as soon as the text comes up the rotation begins. So that's a square that's rotating off the screen. Um, we might want to detect when the square has reached the border of the window so we can change the direction of travel. Um, this is pretty similar to the old Pong game for instance. A simple approach looks for the radius of the square passing the border, but you'll see it's not particularly convincing. So we're going to say the square is about this width, and then we're going to look for that um, uh, the center of the square plus the width to hit the border. So let's have a look at that code. Here we have rotating square with collision. Sorry, I just need to sync this. We'll take a moment. Okay, in this case, you can see the square rotates, but it hits the corn, the the border, and bounces backwards and forwards. So this is very similar code, but there's one big change. So we're still 
uh, incrementing the x and y values and the rotation. However, here we're checking for wall collisions by saying if x is greater than width minus w divided by 2, then multiply this value, this is the value that's used for the increment here, by minus 1. So that basically says, uh, instead of going to the right, go to the left. And if it is moving already to the left, it says go to the right. Rotation there says, instead of turning clockwise, turn anti-clockwise. Same goes for hitting the, the roof or the, the bottom of the screen. And we're going to do the same with the Y value. We're going to set the Y value to, um, instead of going down, go up. And if it's going up, go down, etc. Now, we have a system that works, but as you saw, the square kind of went over the border a little bit. Um, when the pointy edge of the square was um, hitting the border, it went quite a way in before it um, uh, actually collided. What we want is accurate collision. We want the um, squares, uh, the, the um, edges of the square to um, cause the collision to occur as well. So that means we need to change the radius um, each time that we uh, um, uh, change the orientation. So that radius value we just guessed, um, the radius being um, the, the way that we worked out the collision, we're going to change that every frame of the animation and then use our collision mechanics based on that new value for every frame. Sounds like a lot of work, but really it's not actually that much work, as you'll see. So here we have the same code. We've got everything here is the same, except the collide mechanics here have this extra set of um, calculations. And the dynamic radius is calculated every time collide is called and collide is called every time draw is called. So if we have a look at this, it's going to look a lot more realistic. It's going to hit those corners and bounce quite nicely. You can see because the um, square rarely sits flat, it's quite important that those um, pointy edges of the square um, bounce off the border to make it look realistic. Okay, when we have collision with the border, you can basically guess the type of animation we're going to get. You can look at it and see what's going to happen fairly soon. But when there's lots of objects being animated simultaneously, the results are a lot more difficult to predict. So I'm going to show you some bubbles bouncing around. Um, so this one's in processing examples. And we're going to go to simulate. Uh, sorry, to motion and then to bouncy bubbles. Here we have a number of bubbles. We're going to use 12 bubbles and they're going to be all different sizes and they're going to have gravity and then bounce off each other like so. Eventually they're going to come to rest over a period of time. But you can see they push into each other just a little bit and then collide with each other. And they're behaving like they're fairly bouncy balls that are eventually coming to rest at the bottom of the screen. 
So this is essentially the same process as our um, redrawing of the rotating square, but we have now got a number of objects um, moving around at one time. If you look at the code, you can see we have an object for a ball, and for every ball, we call the collide method, we call the move method, and we call the display method. So here we've got um, the ball object, class ball, and you can see there's a method there for collide, a method for move, and a method for display. So working through that code will be really useful for you, I think. Similarly, mixing some knowledge about curves and about animated bodies can result in some pretty amazing effects. You, you've uh, probably worked through the curves lecture by now, um, and you understand how to make curves, um, but um, here's an example of what you can use um, that curve knowledge for. So we're trying to create a soft body in this example. Um, and we've also got a really nice blur effect that you'll probably find very useful. So I'm going to just find that one. All right, here we go. So this is soft body dynamic simulation using curve vertex and curve tightness. Here we have our setup. And then we have every frame of the draw method. We're not drawing the background, are we? We're drawing fill, and then we're drawing rectangle, zero, zero width height. So this is a black background with transparency. Black background with transparency. And we're saying zero, zero, um, up to the width, up to the height. So it's covering the whole background. Then we're saying draw shape and move shape. Draw shape is here, move shape is here. Now you'll notice that we've got a number of nodes which we're setting up and we're uh, adding a rotating angle, rotation angle and a radius. Then we're drawing the polygon using curve tightness of a particular value. That's changing all the time. And then here we begin shape and we draw each of the vertices. Then to move the shape, we take the mouse point and we add a certain value. We create a bit of a springing effect. And then we um, change the acceleration here based on the um, the center and we change the, the um, value of the curve tightness which is also um, happening every frame of the draw um, method. So here we go. By moving fast, you can see how much effects you have. And notice the, if, if I move fast, you can see the, the shadows behind. That's uh, the previous frames drawn on, onto the um, previous rectangles. And don't forget the rectangle is, um, the black rectangle with transparency is transparent. So the previous frames can be seen through that black rectangle, um, but they're faded out. That means you don't have to redraw each of those previous rectangles each time you use the draw method. That's quite a helpful way of adding a bit of blur to each of your objects. Now, if I stop for a little while, you'll notice it eventually returns to my position and we get less of the um, curviness, the soft body effect because it's not moving as fast. As soon as I move, it starts to wobble. Okay, 
just like you can update one object with each draw frame, you can update mem many. And a really interesting algorithm is Craig Reynolds' Boyd's flocking algorithm. So this is a really interesting algorithm. This one again is inside processing. Sorry, I've just closed it. I'm gonna go to um, examples. It's in simulate and it's flocking. Now here you can see each of these arrows is working out its direction based on all of the other arrows around it. It's trying to get its own personal space. You can see none of them are really on top of each other. They're moving away from each other, but sometimes they get quite close to each other. And then you can see they're all trying to move in the same direction as well. So this is a pretty similar algorithm to how um, birds fly. Uh, they avoid, um, they don't necessarily have any command and control structure. They don't have a leader and a follower as such. Um, but they tend to move in groups that could be described as um, synchronized, so to speak just like this. So if I add some extra little um, birds, they'll move straight until they find a flock and then join it. So there you go. They're moving straight into a flock. And then they join it. So just like the bubbles example, this example has a number of these objects which all have a um, methods to update their direction and their behavior based on rules. So I'll leave you to work through this code. Uh, you can see we have a separate tab here for the Boyd class. It's got quite a lot of code in there. So it'll take you a while to work through this one and then a separate class for a flock, which is made up of an array list of voids. So the, the base code here is actually pretty straightforward. It's just um, create the flock. We've got a new flock there, and we're gonna add 150 voids into it, and we're gonna put them all in the middle, and then each time we use the draw method, we say flock.run, and that happens. So you can see when we run it, we have our 150 boards starting off in the middle and then they run up across like so. All right, a final example of animation. Um, the flocking algorithm kind of simulates natural systems, but a spring model um, is a fundamental, a fundamental physical system and it's fairly easily simulated. So I'm just gonna show you that simulation. So if we go to simulate and then spring, we can open it up. You'll see the code isn't super long, but it's not short either. We have a draw spring algorithm here and an update spring algorithm. The update spring here has a bunch of uh, calculations to do with acceleration, velocity, and position. Um, we also constrain the position of the top bar so it doesn't go too high. So if I run this, you can see as I pull this down, it springs away like so. The width of this rectangle here is just changed to make it kind of cute, but it's not actually um, significant. What's significant is the position of the, the white bar. Where should we put that? 
should it just jump straight back to the center? Well, in this case, we want it to bounce around a little bit. So we update the spring by saying, um, uh, by giving the forces and giving the updated position here. The velocity is based on the force, which is based on the acceleration. And that's affected by the mass. We can change these values to give it a different feel. So if we make this mass larger and rerun it, we'll find that the um, behavior is slowed. And if we make it even bigger, the spring doesn't have as much force compared to the mass. The mass is very um, heavy. So in that case, basically, um, the animation can look realistic because the physical system is very well understood in this case. We understand a lot about springs. Some physical systems aren't understand as well, understood as well, so it can be harder to simulate them. Final example is uh, trying to show that using animation in interaction can change the feeling of interaction. So mapping the mouse position to different parameters of interaction results in a very different feel. Um, in this example, the size and therefore position of two transparent squares are controlled by the mouse. This one is in input, which is right up the top, and mouse 2D. Okay, mouse 2D. So here we have um, a very simple algorithm. All we're drawing is two rectangles. One based on mouse X and one based on the inverse of mouse X. Mouse Y is also used as you can see here. So as we move around the screen, we get um, different sizes, like so. One becomes small and one becomes bigger. And if we do a circle here, you can kind of see, it looks like we're moving the squares around each other. As we move them in the middle, they seem very close to each other bringing one forward and one back. Okie dokie. So hopefully you now understand the concept of animation and draw and how we can use uh, uh, updated parameters within an, a, um, a, a real-time animation by using the draw command. So animation is at the heart of processing and indeed interactive media. So I recommend you learn the extensive possibilities and lots of the common tricks by reading the examples, which are in input, motion, and simulate mostly, but there's lots of them in other places too. Look at them very carefully and um, do lots of research yourself. Thank you very much.